guys, we're going to hop on over to M119, and we're going to take a look at um, some of the basic shirt manipulations that we went over just on the board and see what they look like in Optitex. Now I'm going to post this on Blackboard, uh, this whole pattern, so you guys at this point will have uh, not only the shirt sl sloper, the uh, skirt sloper is already on there, it's slightly different, has two darts in back instead of front, uh, uh, one, uh, this one has one, and it also has a sleeve sloper over here, so you guys can use uh, this sloper, this pattern, uh, for whatever you want to do with it, um, and including the upcoming assignments that will deal with just our shirt sloper up here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these ones that we're not going to use them right now, not for at least for this demo, so just to sort of clean things up a bit. And I'm going to focus in on my front bodice sloper. So here's what it looks like. Boop. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and go over some of the techniques we went over. So um, the first thing that we went over was the um, addition of darts. So instead of one dart, maybe I want more than one dart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a measurement of my total dart intake. Okay, and it's three inches. Okay, so let's say I want two darts. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the very tip of this dart to select it, remember you can only select it by clicking the tip, delete it. Now I'm going to place in my new dart placements here on the hem here. Um, and notice I did not close that dart, I still have this entire waistline length which includes the dart intake. Okay, so what I need to do, let's say I want my first dart to stay here, that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and add points, hold down the Alt key to make sure that pops up, and this would now be my previous or next. That's right, previous, because we're traveling around the figure like this. So I hit this one previous, then this, and then this would be our, my next point. So I'm going to put that, what's uh, 3 divided by 2? one and a half, so that is what my darts are going to be. I'm going to make it a graded point so I can measure my distance between my darts, which we can have whatever I want. Maybe I want it to be half an inch. And let's do one more, which is my second dart, another inch and a half. So again, total, if we add up all of our dart intakes, we still have that three inches. We haven't changed that. And now what I'm going to do is just go ahead and put in my darts. Now at this point, you'll notice that Optitex doesn't like to do darts um, that aren't perpendicular to the hem. Um, what you need to do to make it point toward our apex is hold shift. Then we can start to bend our darts here and there. And let's assume I'm going to finalize this. So I'm not going to bring it right to my apex here. I'm going to bring it down slightly. Remember, our finalized dart shouldn't go straight to the apex. And let's put this one, again, we want it to point to it, again, right there. All right, let's zoom in, see what this looks like. So then we have our two darts instead of one, right? And we can put as many as we want. I can put two, I can put three, three one-inch darts, two one-and-a-half-inch darts, one three-inch dart, so on and so forth. Let's just go back to our beginning. And that's how we make multiple darts in Optitex on our pattern. Now let's take a look at dart rotation because dart rotation is a little bit different. This is the, the actually the one new technique that we learned. And uh, there's a couple ways to do it in Optitex. Uh, they have like a dart rotation method, but it really doesn't work that well. 
So um, I do it as if I was working with paper instead. I find that it works much better, much easier. Um, it, it, it always works the way you want it to. Um, it, you can put darts anywhere. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the cut piece tool to cut out the dart. Remember, that's always our first step is to cut out that dart. Okie dokie. Now I don't need this negative space, so I'm gonna take it out and delete it. And then let's put on our new dart. So we did a um, shoulder dart, so let's do that. Remember, I can hold down the Alt key before I cut to get my measurement box to pop up. So if I wanna make it in the exact middle of my shoulder seam, I can use my proportionate value at, uh, set my proportionate value at 50.5, uh, uh, representing 50% uh, to do that. I'll say, okay. I'm gonna cut down to the tip of this dart. Boop. And I don't need to make it a seam yet. In fact, we're not going to make it a seam. It still will be a dart. And now I have these two pieces, okay? So the idea was to rotate this piece around this point to get these dart legs to match up, okay? That's fine. Um, we can do that, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna use the join pieces tool. Because remember, if I'm putting this all this whole dart intake into the shoulder now, I'm eliminating this bottom one. So we're gonna match up our dart legs. And so I'm just gonna use the join piece tool to do that. And I'm gonna do that at the apex point. And it's showing, okay, my apex points are coming together and my dart legs are coming together. And that's what I want. Um, if it was up here, I'd say change direction, but that's not the case. So I say, okay. And there we have it. We can see the new dart up here that has opened up. Now, it's still negative, which is fine. We can keep the dart as a negative space on our pattern. That's okay. We don't need to put in a new dart. If you absolutely uh, must, you can always trace over this and use the dart tool to put it in based on uh, this width and this shape, which we actually will have to do when we do multiple darts. This will need a bit of cleaning up. Um, first, I wanna get rid of the original dart, which apparently is multiplied into two. And I'm gonna also have to clean this up. So uh, let's, let's take a look, a close look at what happened here at the hem. Now this happened because our dart legs were not quite the same width, oh, I'm sorry, length. One was a little bit longer than the other, but this is fairly easy to clean up. All I need to do is grab one of these points that higher one and delete it. Let's delete this guy too. And there we have it. We have a nice clean hem once again. And of course, just to finish this off, the last thing that I would have to do is to uh, move up the tip of the dart away from the apex. And I'm gonna do that by using the move point tool. Uh, keyboard shortcut M. Um, I've sort of minimized my tool selection here to make it a little bit, um, no, it's not there. Oh, it's right here. Move point tool, M, or of course you can find it in your toolbox, but of course I have uh, made that a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna click once to grab it, and I'm gonna move it up uh, at least a half an inch away from that apex up to an inch and a half, and plop it down again. Now let's see what that looks like when we zoom out. And we see we still have that dart shape, but it's now not pointing, that point is not sitting directly on the apex. It's a good uh, distance away, uh, so we won't get quote unquote pointy boob syndrome. And of course, if we wanna go ahead and delete some of these lines, you can. A lot of these lines are just left over from the drafting process, so we can clean it up to make it look all nice however we want. Okay, so that's how we would use dart rotation to create one new dart. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to do multiple darts, um, potentially in a new location. So let's do a dart coming from the waist and let's do, uh, I'm sorry, from the side seam, and let's do a dart coming from the neckline. So I'm gonna grab my cut piece tool and again, I'm gonna hold down the all key. So let's say I want one Oh, let's say right on the bust line, which is about two inches below our armpit here, which of course is our next point. So I type in two right there to get it. Oops. 
cut straight to my apex point. Okie dokie. Now we also have to cut in for our neck. Let's say I want it to be one inch from center front. And let's cut down to my apex point. Okie dokie. So now I have three pieces, okay? One, two, three. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to join these pieces together because I want to eliminate this dart. I just want my side seam dart and my neck dart here. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna use my join pieces tool and join these pieces, okie doke. Same as before, I need to clean up the old dart, get rid of the old dart, and clean up my waistline. There we go. One more lingering little point. Boop, boop, boop. Gone. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this point and I'm going to use the rotate piece tool, keyboard shortcut R, or it's right up here, our rotate piece tool. And I'm going to click on that point of rotation. So the way we use our rotate piece tool is we click on a point for rotation. And in this instance, it is important that we use that apex point because it is our point of rotation. Everything else gets rotated around that point. So I'm going to click on it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch to see my sort of green point. I'm going to open up a little bit of space on both the neck dart and the side seam dart here. Now I want them to be roughly the same width, roughly the same shape. So as I can see, this was kind of small and I made this one a little bit bigger. I want to make them even, so I'm going to go back and just rotate it a little bit more just to even it out a little bit. Let's say that's probably going to be good. It doesn't have to be absolutely exact, but it should be fairly the same. So I have this uh, the same size here. Now these are two pieces and I can't really connect just a point to itself. So to make this a finalized pattern piece, what I am going to have to do is select both pieces and let's open this up a little bit more so I can see it and protect both pieces. And now I'm going to draft over it. So this is sort of like I just built a template. Nope, I don't want to ever remove protection after I have applied it. So again, this is very much like, and let's put a nice little curve into that waist. It'll make it nice and smoother. And let's leave a bust point. So again, this is much like when we did the slash and spread for the flounces, how we manipulated the pieces to create a template and then protected the multiple pieces and traced them to create our final piece. So there we are, that's our final piece. Now before I bring it out, I'm gonna go to my dart tool and put in my darts. Again, I don't wanna bring them all the way down here, I wanna keep them a little bit away from the apex. Unless you super do want pointy nipple syndrome, then bring them, bring them right on there. And we'll bring this out so you can see the final piece. Here we are. And of course we gotta fix that grain. I can't, can't stand to see a grain like that. And that's our two darts um, using dart rotation from one way start, side dart and neck dart, okay? So um, pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, should make a lot of sense. I'm really curious, uh, uh, I will show you how to do the, there's an Optitex way to do dart rotation, but I actually, I, I used to teach it, but I hated it so much, I, I stopped teaching and I actually kind of forget how to do it. Um, but in the meantime, let's do our seam manipulation. So the seam manipulation, again, it's exactly like the way we did it in the skirt, so this really isn't anything new. Um, it's, it's old hat. So let's go ahead and do a simple princess seam to start. I'm going to do all the same seams that we did in the, uh, the lesson where I was showing this on the whiteboard. So I've already cut out my dart. Okay, that's step one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply cut from the dart tip. Let's put a nice little sort of curve in there. And then we'll bring it up to the shoulder seam right there. Okay. Guess what? We're done. 
so easy. I got my side front piece and my center front piece right there. I'm ready to label it, put my seam allowances, so on and so forth. Now, um, just a little um, side note on grain. We always want our grain to go ahead and, um, especially on the center front piece, align with our center front. So this is fine, it's aligned with our center front. However, here on the side piece, we no longer have a center front on this, right? It's its own piece. So what we can do is it's, it's pretty much remaining the same, the same grain, which is fine. But if you would like, what you can do, like a, this would be especially applicable if you had stripes and you wanted stripes to kind of go straight up from your side or from your waist seam, is I can go to my baseline and I can choose this set baseline perpendicular. And base, this basically um, sets your grain line to be perpendicular to whatever line you set it at. So now, instead of this being straight to what this was, it's now perpendicular to this waist seam, which is also fine. And it might be more attractive if you have stripes, because my stripes would be coming straight up from the waist like this. Um, so you can kind of play around with that a little bit. And um, if you're ever really confused, you can always use your side seam, uh, uh, or sorry, your waist seam, and set your grain line perpendicular to that instead of just going with your center front, center back. Okay, let's do another one. So let's do a little crazier one. Um, again, we're always starting with the dark cutout, so I'm not gonna bother cutting it out again. I'm just gonna keep it there. Let's, we did a crazier seam here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draft it out first, because remember, our more complex seams, I don't exactly remember, but it was looked something like this. And right click, finish drafting. And again, the benefit of drafting out our um, lines first is as I can always go back and use my move point tool if I want to sort of correct or amend uh, the seam in any way before I go and cut. Uh, let's say I like it, so let's go ahead and cut. And I'm gonna, again, go right over the points that I made just to ensure that it is the same line. Boop. And we'll get this and that's it. Again, done. Now I have my side front, my side front shirt, and my uh, center front shirt over here. And again, just like before, we can still see the dart sitting in the seam, so we're still getting the same fit, uh, the same shape as before. Okay, let's do something a little bit more complicated. Let's do that bib seam. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to come and I'm not going to worry about cutting out this dart yet. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw in my bib seam. Now you can cut this dart out first if you want. Just when you end up closing it, use the join piece tool instead of the close dart option. It really works the same way. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go straight into the bib seam. I'm not going to draft it out first because I'm feeling a little reckless. But I am going to make sure that I pass through this dart point. And then there we go. Now my bib part is done. I don't have to do anything else to my bib part here. I'm done, done, done. But what I do need to do now is I need to select this dart, go to tools, go to darts, and go to close darts. And we're to say okay to whatever it says here. And it has now closed my dart. Now this is gonna need a little bit of cleaning up. So first I'm gonna clear out my dart here. I'm going to clear out some of these lines which have gone astray. But you can essentially see what has happened. Now here I have, and this is probably because of our curve points. Now I wonder if it would be cleaner if I had used my join piece tool. Probably a little bit, but we're going to fix this up. I'm going to zoom in. Always use your zoom in for the cleanups because it makes it easier. And it created a couple extra sort of points here. So there we go. That's all I really needed to do is get rid of that uh, extra point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's zoom out again and I wanna show you it side by side so you can see how the dart has sort of gone into the uh, uh, up into the shoulder. So I'm gonna put this here. And we actually see it, it went here and a little bit here. 
almost like it split it between the two. And that's perfectly fine. That's what we want it to do. Um, so that is our bib seam. Again, we've eliminated any remains of the dart here. Um, and again, because this has this negative space here, that's really sort of the translation of what the dart used to be. So it's the same fit, same shape. It's not bigger, it's not smaller, same everything. We've just changed the seaming, okay? Let's do one more. We can, I'm going to show you the cutout. We can cut out the dart too. And you can do this too if you want. Just depends how you prefer to do it. So let's do, oh, I don't know. Oh, that's right. We did one more. And we cut it. Oops. Cut piece, not cut. From the armhole down to the center here. Let's kind of oh, so I cut it already there, so now I gotta do this one too. Just like that. There we go. And now I'll use the join piece tool for these guys. Connecting my apex. And of course, I'll have to clean up the waste a little bit. So I think the closed dart tool is a little bit easier to use, but we have to do a little cleanup too anyway, so who knows. And then there we are. So do we put the dart right here? We have our seam coming straight through here. Now we can also from here um, go a little bit crazier. So um, I'm going to show you one other method for even something a little bit more complicated, um, let's say I want a seam that kind of goes through my original dart, okay? So we did this on the skirt, but let's see how we can do it on the shirt. So I'm gonna draft out, and let's see, I'm gonna do kind of a, a crazy zigzag pattern um, that goes through my original dart. So I kind of want a shirt, you know, it has this crazy sort of um, uh, seam, but again, it doesn't matter that it's crazy, um, all that matters is that it goes through my apex point here. So I'm gonna come through here, okay? Let's say I want it to come down through here, and then I'm gonna have it come here, okay? Now I'm gonna finish drafting at this point, even though I'm not quite done with the seam. So I have the seam come down here, come down here, come down here. Now where this needs to pick up is exactly the same point here on the other dart leg, because remember this is, this is uh, negative space. So what I need to do is I need to just quickly measure the distance from my apex down to that point. So that's 4.36, okay? So I'm gonna place a point here. And this is a little tricky, where's your previous, where's your next? But if we travel like this, do, 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 we can see that that's my previous. And oh, look how close I was. Oh man, guys, that's a, that's a new record. Make it a nice grading point. Okay. Now at that point, I can pick up, pick up again with my draft tool and continue the seam. Okay. Do do do. Let's put it down here. Okay. So I have this seam that's going do 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 all the way crazy across like that. Now let's finish drafting. And again, I can do this multiple times. I only pass through the dart once, but if I want to do it multiple times, I can. I just have to take measurements every time and pick up from one side to the other exactly where I left off, okay? So let's cut this out and see how we finalize it. So I'm gonna grab my cut piece tool and we start up here, oop, cut. Cut this guy, okie doke, that's first piece. Then I'm gonna cut this little guy out. Okay, and then we cut this little guy out. So I'm going to cut over all the lines that I made. Now what I need to do is I need to join up the pieces where they should be. So what's my center front piece? This is my center front piece, okay? This guy gets attached here to my side, but this guy's going to go to my front. So I'm going to use my join piece tool to match these guys up. 
Okay, that's not the line that I want, so I'm going to change direction. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Um, let's join this here. Again, I need to change my direction. Okay. And let's take a look. Let's do a little bit of cleanup. Let's get rid of all those old darts, because now we don't have a dart anymore. And we have a little bit, it looks like an extra point right there that we need to get rid of. Let's get rid of that. So now this is what our piece looks like. And you can see where the dart is. The dart went up here into the neckline, right? So these are nice and even. We sort of have this deference of lines. And so what we do, what this will do when we create it together is we'll create a shirt with this kind of crazy zigzag pattern through it. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but again, sometimes we want to do seeming that's complex. Um, and we shouldn't be inhibited by whether it's something complex. We should be inhibited only by whether or not it's possible. And of course, since this applies to our rule that the seam goes through our apex, it can be done and it will be done um, if you so choose. So there we go. There's our just sort of uh, roundup of how to do these techniques in Athitex. Uh, when we come back, we're going to start our first shirt draft, which is going to also include uh, a, a collar and um, probably some armhole facings and a button placket, uh, which we're going to do as well. We're going to learn that as we draft it. Uh, and we will do that on Thursday. And of course, just like the mermaid skirt was a required assignment, you'll be uh, required to do uh, that draft as well. And then we'll move on to our own personal uh, drafts for whatever you want. So you can start to think about that. Uh, the only requirements for your shirt drafts are going to be uh, that it has a collar, it has a button placket, um, and that's about it. And then you do some sort of change, some sort of seam manipulation. So I don't want to see the exact same sort of dart placements and, and uh, things like that are on the sloper. So you got to manipulate it somehow. Uh, but other than that, uh, we'll progress and start our sloper on Thursday. Uh, and if you guys have any sort of little technique, shirt technique that you want me to show you how to do, um, let me know about it and I'll, I'll try to show you. All right, signing off guys, bye-bye.